Stitch is a new experiment from Google Labs that turns simple prompts and image inputs into full UI designs and front-end code. I'll walk you through the best features of the tool and most importantly, show you how to take those designs and make them work in your own development setup. So, let's jump right in. Design a website for my YouTube channel Error Farm with a gritty cyberpunk aesthetic. For the AI, we can choose Rapid which uses Gemini Flash, Pro uses Gemini Pro, or Redesign that uses Nano Banana Pro. That last one creates only images that can be converted to HTML later. I'll leave the default value for now, but we can have a quick look at Nano Banana at the end. You can attach an image or URL to the prompt, and you can choose whether you want a mobile app or web design. We'll create a website. And there it is. I think it looks really nice. If you're not into the first draft, you can generate multiple options. You can select how many variants you want, then choose the creative range, refine, medium, or YOLO. Fair warning, YOLO is something you may not be able to handle and after it, there's no coming back. And just like that, we've got three more versions, all of them pretty solid. I still prefer the original one, so I'll delete the others. Now let's imagine your customer has a specific color theme they always use. It's good business to give them layout options that match their brand, and Stitch makes that easy. Just tell it to make all variants use, for example, a green color theme. And there they are, all ready to send to your customer. If you also need some other pages with the same layout, just ask for it. Add pages for feedback about and contact in the same style. And there they are, feedback transmission, about page and get in touch. If you want to see the mobile version, click view mobile with. This works well because the design is real HTML using Tailwind classes, so resizing is simple. Here's the HTML. You can export the design to Google AI Studio, Jules, or just to a zip file. I'll choose exporting to a zip file so we can get the design to any development environment we want. Inside the zip, you get the design screenshot and the HTML file. Now let's proceed to the main event of this tutorial, how to get the design to work on your own development environment. We'll cover a couple of web frameworks and then a couple of AIs and code editors. Our first environment is the Next.js framework in Firebase Studio. First, let's try what we get if we just give an image to the prompt and then say, convert this design into a Next.js page. I know this isn't going to give the best results, but in some cases, you can use this anyway if you need something quick with a certain color scheme. There it is. Looks decent, but definitely not faithful to the Stitch version. So, let's try a second approach. Copy the HTML and paste it to the prompt. Redesign the web page using this HTML and then I paste the HTML code to the prompt. That looks already much more like the original design. Let's compare side by side. The fonts, colors, and layout match, but the images aren't the same. I think this is already pretty good. Sometimes the results after the first prompt are far worse. If you run into problems with fonts and the layout, try this prompt. Turn below HTML to the web page. For Tailwind configuration, no approximation and preserve computed values. Please check if my custom CSS relies on browser defaults like H1 size. If so, explicitly add those styles to the component because Next.js or Tailwind might reset them. Those are Tailwind specific instructions. If you want to know more about what they mean, you can ask the AI. Then paste the HTML. We don't need that prompt since everything looks good, but we can ask the AI to double check the fonts. Sometimes they're slightly different, but the fonts in the HTML come from Google fonts, so it's easy to match them exactly.
they look the same. It looks like the original white fonts are a little bit brighter though. We can fix that, but let's first change the images to be correct so we can see the fonts in the same background. Good. Now the images match. And yes, the original fonts still look a bit brighter. The reason can be anti-aliasing or some kind of darkening layers, so I ask Gemini. If the page has some kind of anti-aliasing on, turn it off. If you notice subtle visual differences like this, the best fix usually comes from opening a separate chat with the latest Gemini model. Tell it you're converting Tailwind HTML from a design tool into a Next.js page and describe exactly what looks different. Now it looks better. The blue color is still slightly off and the play icon looks a bit different. I'll leave those for you to fix if you want. Just ask Gemini. We'll proceed to the next development environment, Svelte JavaScript environment built with Vite. We start by creating a new workspace in Firebase Studio. It asks, do you want to install the recommended extension? Yes, please. The environment is ready, then the prompt, make this web page real and then paste the same HTML from Stitch that we used earlier. Done, and this came out shockingly good on the first try. This is really nice. Last time with Svelte, it took an endless series of prompts. We got lucky, but usually I face the same issues here as I showed you with Next.js. So let's move on to the next environment, Visual Studio Code with GitHub Copilot. The default AI is GPT-5 mini, I'll leave that. Make this HTML real using Next.js, then I paste the HTML from Stitch. Done. Now let's see how we can serve the web page on localhost. Install dependencies and run the dev server by typing npm install and then npm run dev. It's on localhost port 3000, I'll click the link. Okay, a few things need tweaking. Fonts are wrong, background is plain white, button looks off. Let's fix the fonts first. Now the fonts look correct. It seems like the web server is reporting quite a few warnings. Let's fix them also by copying them to the Gemini prompt. When I restart the server, I only get a cache error. You can fix that by deleting the .next folder and restarting the server. The fixes didn't have any visual impact on the page. Let's fix the background next. Nice. It looks already quite close. Next, let's fix the blue color. As you can see, the blue color is missing from the logo and the subscribe button. I guess probably the blue color is missing from the HTML class. And there, the web pages look identical. Looks like our Visual Studio Code project is ready. 
Next, let's move on to the next development environment, Google's Anti-Gravity Editor with Gemini 3. Make this web page real using next.js, and then again I paste the HTML that Stitch created. Now let's ask Gemini how to view the page. The answer is npm run dev. We have some issues again. Fonts seem to be wrong and the background is white. Let's start with the fonts. The fonts are fixed, then let's fix the background. The background is fixed. There seems to be the same brightness problem with anti-aliasing that we had earlier. Let's fix it next. The anti-aliasing is fixed. Next, there seems to be some width problem with the first image. Personally, I think it is nice like that, but we can fix it anyway so you can see how I would try to fix it. So right-click the image and then click Inspect. Copy the element that is highlighted. This element should be a little bit wider, as wide as the horizontal bar above it. And then I paste the element to the prompt. And now the page looks good. Once again, the play icon seems to be different, but you can easily fix it by asking Gemini to make the play icon look the same as in the original design. One thing that you need to test is whether the page scales correctly. For example, like in a mobile view. Looks like in a narrow view, the width of the image is a bit off again. Well, that's something that a normal user wouldn't notice because they don't know what our original stitch design was. So I'd leave it like that. If you really want to fix it, it's an easy fix for an AI. Just tell Gemini that the width of the image is a little bit wrong in a narrow view, but it's okay in a wider view. Now as a last thing, let's look at how the redesigning works with Nano Banana Pro. Attach an image and then type a prompt. Redesign as a cinematic cyberpunk layout. Add heavy CRT scan lines, chromatic aberration glitches, and volumetric neon fog. I want to add some extra words here to show you that Nano Banana Pro can make really cool visual stuff. And there it is. It's an upgraded version with really cool visuals. Let's make two more so we have options to choose from. I think they are absolutely awesome. Now keep in mind these are only images. They're not HTML. The next step would be converting them to HTML. I can show what that process looks like, but I'll say up front that the results probably won't be great because the images are too ambitious. They look more like game screens than websites. We can still try, but this is more of a preview. I clearly need to make a separate tutorial on how to upgrade Stitch designs with Nano Banana Pro without starting from artwork that's too far from a web layout. As you see, the converted web pages look nice, but not nearly as polished as the Nano Banana input image. I also checked what the results would be with Google AI Studio, 
and here's the web page. As you see the automatic prompt the AI Studio created was, build me an app with screens that look like this. You can hotlink images from the HTML. In all it's a decent page, but not much like the Nano Bananas version. Looks like I need to make a new video just about Nano Banana Pro. That wraps up the tutorial. If you enjoyed it, drop a comment. See you in the next video.